Welcome, archaeologists. It is Sunday night, and that means it is time for the Weekly Dig. For anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime old and new. I'm just pumping up the uh, audio a little bit. I'm Brent, and these are my fabulous co-hosts, John. Konnichiwa, Mina. And Steve. Hello, I'm not a Genshin addict, I swear. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, let us start our dig tonight by analyzing an anime movie we all watched this week Space Runaway Ideon A Contact Um, which is Uh, yeah I think I think yes yes it is (laughs) Um, this could have been really a short anime if the the woman just said oh you know what maybe you guys are right maybe I shouldn't go down there by myself (laughs) Yeah, um, or I don't know, opening a dialogue. How about that? Right. You know, um, it's an idea for you. I, I think this, like this movie, this series, can be summed up with the phrase: "Mistakes were made." Oh yeah. yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> um, but it is very interesting, actually. Like how how it is. So it's a quick backstory. Um, this is a, a compilation movie of uh, Space Runaway Idion, anime series, 1980, by Yoshiki Termino, creator of Gundam. Um, so this is what he did immediately after Gundam, and everyone basically thought that Gundam was over, that that was okay, he did a thing, whatever, moving on. Um, so Idiot was kind of his next big work, and it is a big sci-fi epic, um, sort of a space-traveling epic. One of the nice things is that because Gundam is usually set in the Earth's sphere, you know, very close to Earth, um, this is much farther away, uh, interstellar civilization kind of thing, um, thanks to the DS drive. And... The movie, in particular, doesn't even start with the humans. Uh, it starts with the aliens who are out um, exploring, and they, they stumble across the humans on uh, this planet, uh, which they call Solo. Um, and uh, they, they find the humans... He shot first. first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so they find the humans because the aliens are searching for this thing called Ide. Um, the the ide force the ide power something like that ide energy um, and so they're out searching for it and it, it, they they know it might be on this planet the humans have got kind of gotten there first they they established this colony one of the things that's a little better established in the TV series is that the humans um, have basically been been going out on archaeological expeditions uh, throughout space this is one of those expeditions uh, and they found uh, remnants of a another civilization they call the sixth civilization. Uh, which is just, you know, we know these alien civilizations exist, we've never actually encountered one yet. So it's just number one, number two, number three, this is number six. Um, and they've uncovered um, the ancient alien fire engines of doom. Exactly. Um, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, the, the Ideon is um, a bunch of big red fire trucks, basically. Um, which they, they've uncovered, and and so the interesting thing about this opening is that the aliens are just here trying to find this idiot thing. The humans have uncovered it as part of their archaeological expedition. Um, we have one of the aliens of the Buff Clan um, decides to uh, decides to go down and investigate. She's like, ah, I don't think we're, we have any problems. Um, and some of the other aliens come down after her, and you have this just. I think, like, really well thought out, kind of well, well, um, well dramatized sequence, um, really getting across that idea of, of escalation, unintended escalation. Because um, you have your, 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 your um, Kerala down there, the aliens swoop in, they see there are humans near her, who just happen to be near her, so they fire, like, a warning shot. Um, the humans see this and like, oh no, we're under attack. So they swing their weapons. They start attacking back. The aliens start attacking them back, and it just turns into an all-out war in about thirty seconds. Yep. <laughs> it's like, Ugh. and all they had to do was follow the first contact protocol. Mm-hmm. Eliminate your enemies and see them driven before you. Oh no, the other no, one—that's Conan. That's oh, Conan. sorry, sorry. That's sorry. that's Conan's first sorry. contact. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Now, yeah, so <clears throat> to that point, when, when this scene happened and, you know, like, you know, the Kerala, who's the black-haired woman who, who comes down, she kind of 
disobeys the uh, direct order to come back and they're really just trying to get her to come back because yeah. they actually do have a protocol of mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know one of their worries is, is that hey if these people are already out here it makes it a very astute observation um hey if the humans are if these human beings are already out here then that means that they have a technology that's pretty close to ours mm -hmm. so we need to mm -hmm, tread lightly yeah so this this woman comes down and she goes, no, nah, it's, it's it's it'll be fine, it'll be fine, and don't worry about it, don't worry about it. In a Warcraft, <laughs> yeah, and and comes down and she really actually doesn't do anything. And like no. you say, it's yeah. just it's it's just just mistakes remain. You know, okay, well we think that they'll understand if we say here's a shot, stay away from this area, mm -hmm. that they'll understand and stay away from the area. And no, the human beings just went, ah, no, you know, mm -hmm. and and fight back, and then. You know, it's just amazing to me how like an interstellar war is caused by just nothing. Mm -hmm. Idiocy. Idiocy. <laughs> nothing. Just, just you know, just like whatever. Yep. And this is where Tomino, if t kill him all, Tomino. Oh. This, this is where he deserves his nickname ah. because you start seeing people, the humans, who are like out having a picnic. Yep. Oh, where are your parents? I don't know. We'll get to it. It's okay. Get on the thing, and I'll get on my little bike and and, and look for your parents. Okay, mm -hmm. Auntie. Auntie's dead in thirty seconds. Like, mm -hmm. and and it's not like you know, Auntie rides off over the crest of the hill. There's an explosion. No, Auntie rides over the crest of the hill. You see her right over the crest of the hill. Mm -hmm. You see the explosion. You see Auntie get blown to bits. Yeah. And you know, you're just like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and it that just escalated goes. very quickly, yeah. very, <laughs> like, very quickly. <laughs> like, yeah, and 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 it doesn't. He doesn't pull back from the the from the carnage. I'll just put it yeah. that way. Yeah, put it that way. yeah. Um, this show likes to show to show us people dying. Yes, literally. <laughs> yes, up, it but, does. You, you know, here's the explosion. Here are the people actually like like taking it taking it out. Much like Macross, actually. Uh, a couple of years later, you know, there's yeah. shots of people inside, um, and obviously Gundam did it too, and, and others, but um, definitely in that line of, of shows. Um, now, John, I know you you had seen some of it on before, correct? Yes, okay. I've I've seen at least six or seven episodes of the of the series itself, okay. and, and <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's what gets me about this film <laughs> is. In the series, it's like what you would expect out of a series. It's you know, it's going to be one episode a week or whatever it was for fifty-two episodes, and you have this. Here's the humans, and here's what they're doing on on planet Solo, and here's the people that are studying the archaeological site, and here's the things that they've dug up. Oh, aren't these strange? How do they work? How do the mechanics work? Do we know what powers them? You have like a lot of this buildup. And then you get the mistakes made, and then you have all these things like start happening. This is kind of a cascade. So that you kind of know who these people kind of are, and you kind of have a sense of like where they play a part in this. And this film drove me bananas because it <laughs> felt like somebody just went and said, okay, we, uh, uh, let's just try to get the start going here. And then like, don't explain to anybody. Just like, like, just people will figure, figure this whole thing out as we move forward. Um, yeah, I had and, to do here we go. Let's put this part, this action scene together, and then this other part. Like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> I know there, there were several moments where I was like, okay, let me rewind this a little bit. Did I miss mm. something? Yeah. And yes, uh, yes, yeah, there are yeah. parts like that are <laughs> yeah. helpful from the series to explain things a little bit better. That yeah. I found watching this was just like, okay, I, I'm gonna have to just sort of disconnect the wheels and just mm -hmm. let this move forward mm -hmm. and then see where it goes it's because it's now it's within like literally less than 10 minutes it's yeah. beyond the first few episodes of, oh, yeah. that i've seen mm -hmm. yeah. and then it just progresses forward i'm like okay i get where you've chopped out the sort of we fight the buff clan monster of the week <laughs> yeah. kind of thing yeah, yeah, you know yeah. the buff clan has this ship we fight mm -hmm. that this week next week they have this this mech kind of thing and we fight that Yes, you've cut all those out to try and progress the story, but it just kind of felt like that's what exactly what you did. You just excised portions of it, which included like some background and motivations yeah. to the characters, and just kind of snapped it together to be like, okay, they're jumping, they're doing this. There's the great, you know, mach machine ship and the Idian, and now we're here, and that happens, and there's this attack. Like, 
wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took me forever to figure out that the ship that they were on was actually not a human ship. Oh, like yeah. After a while, I was just like, going, oh, okay. And then they're talking about how they jump through space and all space and all this stuff. And you're just like, after a while, you're just like going, oh, yeah, yeah. I have to learn anime physics now? <laughs> oh, my head hurts. And, when- and the, the only thing that got me through was, you know, Afro Amaro Ray. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, wow. Amaro with an Afro. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, not that there's a, a lot of physics explanations necessarily, no. but when you have the sort of main ship in the series, when it enters the null space mm. and they're flying, you do have plot points where it's like the buff clan also has the same kind of null space drive. Right. So they can enter null space. And you had, like, they excised this really cool, I thought, fight with Idion and the Buff Clan in null space. Mm-hmm. And it was, it actually, you're not explained, like, a lot of how things work other than, like, don't get away from the ship. Right. If you fall off the ship... Mm-hmm. You then will fall out of null space because the idiot doesn't have null space drive. Mm-hmm. Only the big ship does. Right. And it's just like, that was an interesting thing to have. And they excised the entirety of like null space combat. Mm-hmm. And it just became like, we'll just track them through null space. But like, yeah. well, but, but that was interesting. Like, you know. Well, I mean, a lot of things were interesting. I, I don't think they could have yeah. included <laughs> everything. Yeah. I mean, but it's just, that would have been a nice, like, somewhat of, of a detail for null space travel that would have been like, oh. I, I don't but, know. For me, I would have rather had more at the beginning to establish the characters. Yeah. Background, why you yeah. care about them, who yeah. exactly they are in relation to each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. What's interesting is it doesn't feel it doesn't feel rushed. It feels choppy to me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it feels like they, you know, they, they remove things, but like the scenes themselves flow at a fairly comprehensible pace you just don't know who you're looking at or or or, you know who these people are i i felt that it was choppy and then when i looked down at the time when Mm -hmm. the by the time the first movie ended which was i think it was a little over 80 minutes right Mm -hmm. and i was just like that felt like a three hour (laughs) slog i mean i was just like trying to catch up trying to understand trying to you know just go Portions of it were pretty neat. Um, you know, conceptually, you know, some of the stuff in there, I was just kind of like, okay, it responds to children somehow. And, you know, that's not fully explained. And now is the baby in the first movie or in the second movie where he gets Idiom to do the thing? Lou. Um, baby Lou. Lou. Baby Lou. It starts happening in the first movie. But it starts happening in the first movie. Happens okay. in the second movie. Second, okay. So you get an idea that, you know, it has the Indian has mm-hmm. some connection to children mm-hmm. and not in a and it was, and it's kind of weird because what's not explained is that it's a violent interaction. Mm-hmm. It's it's you know, it's not just like, Oh, I must protect the kids. No, he's protecting the kids because it's you know, his his own li- its own life, mm-hmm. you know, that's yeah. trying to protect. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna murder everything <laughs> because this kid's crying in, inside of me. Right, so you know, it's right. just like, you know, no, take that statement in this anime <laughs> and psychoanalyze that. Yeah. Um, Let's use the power of terrified <laughs> children to murder thousands yeah. of people. Pretty much. <laughs> oh wow, that is pretty much the the, the, the that's what yeah. Eon does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, damn. Well, and that's yeah. one of the interesting things. So you you can see how. Ideon is partly trying to address some of the problems of like <clears throat> stories in Gundam um, as well. Like you know, the RX seventy eight two Gundam is just kind of magically better than all the mecha that came before it, right? Like its its armor is just twice as good, but it's still agile, and it's like it's just it is good. <laughs> Ideon is from this extraordinarily advanced ancient civilization that's way beyond anyone else, so it makes sense. It, it's reasonable for that to just be for right. weapons to bounce off it, like it, understandable. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting because spoilers. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> um, the Ideon is this relic of an ancient civilization that basically went through instrumentality, right? Yeah. Um, all of their souls all sort of coalesced into this one giant energy being, and so its motivations aren't human. It doesn't think the way a mortal human being would. 
So it responds to these children in distress in this very alien way. It reminds me a bit of Forbidden Planet, where it's like, don't right. try to think like the Krell. Like they're just not yeah. they don't work the same right. way. And so um, um, it's cool because you have all of that um, frantically trying to understand what's going on, frantically trying to run away from the bad guys, but uh, and, and frantically trying to, to kind of figure out the technology, but not because you happen to be, you know, walking past the giant robot when a battle happened and you climbed inside. Uh, that's happened in this. <laughs> right. But it's more, you know, no, none of this makes sense because it's a million years old. Yeah. Um, so I, did, I didn't kind of like it, that, but it, it is weird. It, and one of the things that gets you get slapped in the face, but with the with the proverbial two by four, is that people are cruel. Terrible. When I say people and terrible and you know whatever, and when they when the the instant the unknowing instigator of this interstellar war mm. is finally captured with her shield maiden hand yeah, maiden, yeah, yeah. I don't I, Maya, I don't know, yeah. whatever yeah. her name was, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And they like, uh, and and it's kind of very Macross like, where they're just like, get all the civilians on the ship. We don't know anything about the ship. Don't care. Get on the yeah. ship. You know, it's like get on the chopper. You know, it's mm, yeah. get everybody on there. And so you know, you have civilians, you have archaeologists, you have military people, and they're all just trying to go. Mm. And so they're just like, who are these people? They're clearly aliens. They killed all our people. And you have people. <laughs> the instant reaction mm. to these people is unfortunately kill them. Mm-hmm. These two women, alien women, yeah. kill them. Just kill them. Kill them. Yeah, they the kill little them, kid in the hallway. hallway. Yeah. Yeah. Die! Die! <laughs> I'm like, wow. And it's Mankind's just, so peaceful and loving. And they're and you're just like, okay, well, they're going to be put in the brig. No, they're put in kennels. Yeah. yeah. What the hell was that about? Mm-hmm. Well, this spaceship wasn't built by them. They didn't have jails. <laughs> they had kennels, kennels available. Good lord. They had yeah. bars. What do you want, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Human rights? Get over it. They're aliens. What? Yep. Um, yeah. Which uh, may, may actually have been a subtle statement that that's inhumane, but they're not right. humans. Right. So right. I don't know whether that, yeah. um, whether that pan out or not. Yeah. Um, and then Maya has a great time, a great experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it ends well for her. Yeah. Um, and in fairness, like in the TV series, it is very much like that. Where you know, they're just <clears throat> conversing, and then a shot rings out, and my eye just f- flops over because somebody snuck in with a gun, you know. And it's like, mm. um, and we get that that whole lovely scene um, of the uh, the the kind of shootout or the 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 sequence between her and the girl. Wrote wrote up wrote Ropa? No, no, no. No, it's not Ropa, it's it's the younger the younger Lot Lot Lotta? Lotta, Lotta. I think yeah, so, yeah. 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 Lotta. yeah. Um as this like thirteen year old girl is being egged on to, you know, are you actually gonna shoot me things? Thank you. Thank you, Tobino. I wanted to see this. Yeah. Um but it is an important scene because it is kind of central to the themes of the show of of sort of um discrimination and uh and who your enemy actually is. Yeah, right. It's, it's very much kind of that that whole concept. Well, I, when they captured Karala and Maya, mm-hmm. um, there was more in the series. There was a little bit more interaction between those two that gave yeah. you a, a sense of their connection, mm-hmm. and that made Maya's death mm, sure. like more poignant. Mm-hmm. That this, it's not without you know it's meaning to the general sense of the show, but it's like, I felt a little more like, oh, oh right. yeah. wow, you know, mm-hmm. she's lost this person who's like her only kind of link to her world yeah. and her friend and her supporter. Yeah. And it's just like, I felt more emotional impact at her death yeah. from the show than I did from the movie. Sure, Because in the movie, it's literally they're talking and then shot rings out and all you see is they're like, ah, and mm-hmm. like literally just falls, that's it, it's yeah. done. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's just very, very quick, and and you don't really get a sense of Maya at all. Like, mm-hmm. all, all, yeah. it just you, she's just scared the entire yeah. time. So you don't have no other, yeah, you know, idea of who she is. Yeah. And in fairness, and then, oh, good. You no, know, I was just gonna say it just seemed like I had not seen the series. This yeah. is the only thing of video that I've seen. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like going, you almost don't care, mm-hmm. like because mm-hmm. you don't have any. Like, to your point, John, there's no connection to yeah. this character 
And unfortunately, that goes on for a while. And in fairness, this movie was... Everybody who went to see this movie in 1981 watched the TV show. Yeah. Right? The, the, the audience for this are, were existing fans of Ideon. Who yeah. wanted to see, okay, how do you kind of wrangle this into an hour and a half, basically? And also, by the way, please, God, give us a better ending than what you gave us in the TV show. Uh, we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> because, oh boy. Um, but yes, well, and I think and, um, um, uh, an even stronger example of that is the, the romance between, uh, was it Lada and the... Um, uh, the other pilot of uh, Vidyan, um, where no, it's Raypo. Wasn't it Raypo Ray and, and the other and, and Mora? Mora, okay, yeah, um, Mora. Yeah, yeah the guy, the guy who jumps off the light rail system and like yells at some small child. Is that right, that's, that's the guy? Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, he reminds me of me. That's why I yelled at him. <laughs> him and then got back on the rail thing and went off to do the thing. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, um, bad things happened to him. He, he did not have a great time. Um, I'm trying to find a, a shot of that. Oh, he had yeah. a very peaceful death. Yeah. He exits early in in the show, shall we say? Or not early, but he uh, he he precedes everyone. Yes, yes. He, <laughs> ah, he, yeah. Um, one of the first to go, shall we say? Yeah. Um, but yeah, because. Um, that very much felt to me like, man, where was that? It's weird. Um, anyway, that very much felt to me like I have no idea who these characters are, and they're clearly setting them up as this tr you know, tragic lovers. You, you know, they're just telegraphing his death all the way through that. Yeah. Uh, and then he finds yeah. dies, and you're like, well, yeah, I, I expected that. Um, whereas in the, in, the, in, the, in the you know in the series, it's I mean, there's not a lot of it. It's not like but there's a, but there's a little bit, little, bit little bit more. Yeah, it's actually like uh, Slugger Law in, in original Gundam. Uh, the romance between him and Mirai in the TV series builds. In the movies, they're just they suddenly love each other, and it's like oh, yeah, okay. So that happens too, you know. And again, I don't know how much you can you can avoid that necessarily in a, in a movie. Yeah, for their um, romance, you could have just cut to the chase and had her be like, "Come back, you know, and we'll we'll be together again." Here, take your red flag with you. <laughs> oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> like okay. He's dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it kind of reminded me the whole <clears throat> scene, the funeral scene where they're like the battle's done, and it literally jump cuts to like his coffin being put in, yeah. right? Yeah. Being yeah. Right. out of his face. And I'm like, like, oh damn, that's harsh. Mm. And you know, she's crying. <laughs> and I'm just reminded of the one, I think it was uh, was it Char's counterattack, where the one of the pilots gets killed and she's just totally mangled, mm. and like her husband is one of the ground support crews and he's trying to get to her and he goes but i made your your favorite dinner spaghetti mm. with meatballs and i'm like going god that had more impact than this mm. this was just like this is like all right shove them off come on yeah 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 and yeah, the death of spock it is not no no <laughs> um but it shall always be my friend, friend. <laughs> um, and his soul was the most human <laughs> So yeah, um, um, but again, sort of uh, unavoidable. Um, a few other things I do want to point out. Um, so you have Kirara's older sister, who is, boy, did they just you know grab the character sheet for Cecilia Zabi and just yeah, you, right. know, <laughs> you know change the uniform. Like, there you go. That's that's your character. It's boy. What her older sister? That the father was disappointed that she was a girl. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, that's yeah like, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I so I was watching that and and, and I it, again I had to rewind and go. Wait a minute, this is the sister now. Okay, what what are we doing? That's that's Zabi. That's that's she's gonna get a headshot from Shark. No, no, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's, that's, something, that's something else. Mm -hmm. um, no, but and you know she's just like you know I'm gonna be the warrior because I was never a boy in my in my father's eyes and yeah. you know. Yada yada yada, and I'm just like one. Everyone, no one, no one, no one, except for little what's his name, the little baby, mm. um, Lou, Lou, little baby Lou. No one is happy. No. Everyone's miserable. Exactly. Everyone yeah. is just like. I re actually in one part of the movie, I remember they're like sitting in the forest behind the bridge, right? Yes. Okay, you heard that, folks, in Chatland that yeah. the forest behind the bridge. 
uh-huh. which remind me a lot of Tenshi Muyo. But anyway, yeah. and uh, so they're sitting there, and like one of the little things that lives in this microcosm Blind is frog. spitting on yeah. Miss Cheryl. You know, I'm just like going. It, I know this was supposed to be comedic effect, but it just seems like, like you know, like if you're having a bad day, it's just that one little thing bird poops on your shoulder, mm-hmm. and you yep. just, you know, you break. Exactly. And it's just like every nothing, nothing mm-hmm. is going right for anybody, yeah. and you're just like, okay, I don't like this woman. We know she's evil. Mm-hmm. She knows we know she's going to do bad things in the future in the rest of this movie. Mm-hmm. But do we have to have that? <laughs> The answer would be yes, Steve. Obviously. <laughs> Apparently so. Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good observation because I hadn't yes. thought of that. It's like, there's nobody in this film that's happy. Oh, no. No, absolutely not. No, yeah. every, at, like, at, all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, at any given point, they're almost kind of neutral. Almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, yeah. most of the time, it's just, like, drama to drama to yeah. drama to more drama. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Um, I mean, the, um, uh, okay, I'm going to try to pull up the, the, the list of characters now. Um... Um, like Deck is fine the little kid who goes along with Cosmo um, with, with his squirrel with, in its own space yeah, suit, in <laughs> oh space suit which is, I, I am convinced that that is the, the team having fun with the fans of saying we know this is ridiculous and that's why we're putting it in <laughs> yeah when they got lunch uh, and they hands the squirrel like some food. Yeah. It still has its yeah. like, plexi helmet on, and the food goes into the helmet. Like, I have no idea <laughs> how the physics of that work. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, well, interesting. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, no, uh, again, I think that was totally the the, uh, the animators having a laugh at everyone. But yeah, so, you know, the kids are fine, right? They're running around doing their, their thing. Um, but they're very much, you know, Gundam slash Macross, the, the three kids in the corner. In every yeah. you know Gundam Macron series, which whatever, but you know everyone else is pretty much miserable all the time. Um, which again, kind of where I think I got it from, I would argue. Um, and that's just a whole other thing, <laughs> because oh my gosh, the Evangelion um, influence from Ideon, um, it's pretty pretty obvious. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's it is interesting because. Again, you really don't see this in anime, particularly of this period, this idea of just very, very heavy war drama all the way through. Um, because you, know, you had that kind of thing in Gundam, but you had characters who were still, you know, they, they felt the nobility of the fight. They felt like they were kind of doing the right thing. And you don't really get that anywhere in here. Um, yeah, right. What's also interesting, um, and I, I was intrigued to note that it, I don't know if they redubbed the lines, if they just it was selective or whatever, but... In the original anime, Buff Clan refer to themselves as samurai. Yeah. And as <clears throat> Fogling Bushido. Do. Yeah. And that was a very interesting thing because there is very much a samurai, you know, element to their personality and their actions. But it has creates a whole nother kind of layer of all the stuff going on with them. Um, and this idea that, you know, they're doing this because, because it, it's the right thing to do. Because of what they've been told they should do by their code, not because it is inherently honorable. You're right. Um, and it's kind of a commentary on the classic samurai bushido code of you know we'll, we'll go out there, and also arguably a, a commentary on uh, the Japanese soldier in general, right? And the idea of you know blind obedience to 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 the military. Um, yeah, unless well, the buff clan throws wave after wave yeah. after wave of people. <laughs> At sheer death, mm-hmm. and it's keep going. Was it, was it, it was like the Futurama Biff or you know, the mm-hmm. captain? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he goes, and I Zap really, Brannigan. Zap Brannigan, I really, really figured out that I sent wave after wave of people because it had a, a kill count, and once it reached that kill count, it turned off. <laughs> it was like, yes, aren't I the hero? Kill bots. You yeah. suck. <laughs> they had a preset and, kill <clears throat> limit. <Yeah. laughs> And but and when you get into the you know I don't want to spoil it but mm-hmm. when you get into the second movie they actually talk a lot more about this mm-hmm. and it's very reminiscent of actually you know Shogun Japan mm-hmm. how how things work and you know those you know what's important what's not important and they really do play up the samurai they really do say samurai in, mm-hmm. in there mm-hmm. and um, but they really do they they're really just like 
go forth and kill. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Much. You know, and it's and it's like I can only imagine the series of doing this week after week, where mm-hmm. there's like, okay, here's the idiot thing that we've been looking for. It's millions of years old. It's older than than both of our our mm-hmm. civilizations, and it's just been like making hash of our yeah. forces up to this point. If I was, you know, like tapped <laughs> to pilot the new thing to go after the Indian, <laughs> what I would be like, okay, yeah, sure, no problem. Get in the thing and just go. <laughs> yeah. And just, just not look back. Just mm-hmm. go because I know where I'm heading. Yeah. I know it's it's death. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just all it is. But God bless the little bluff kid, you're, you're, the, the buff client. Exactly. You're, you're, yeah. you're a good samurai. Um, which again, I think is kind of the, one of the points of the show is that this is all really ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, like all of this, is and, just and I love that this undercurrent as they're trying to figure out what's powering the idiot. They can't figure it out. They can't figure it out. They mm-hmm. finally figure it out. It's infinity, and then you just go, oh, and then you make the realization, and then they, you know, it's just like, oh, it's just you know, at one point they both both sides figure it out, and you're just like, okay, you can stop now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can stop now, mm-hmm. and and yep. they're just like. No. no, no. Yeah, no. the first few minutes, Karal is like, "Do you have a translator?" Yes, puts it in her ear, mm-hmm. and she can understand Japanese. Mm-hmm. Somebody talk to somebody, mm-hmm. damn it! <laughs> yeah, nope. It's like everybody's figuring out these things are. This is not. This is going towards a a rather catastrophic end, mm-hmm. <laughs> and both yeah. sides are really kind of aware of what yeah. the catastrophe that's looming, and yet nobody's just like, "Hey, let's open a radio channel." Uh, for what it's hailing worth, frequencies <laughs> in the TV series, that is kind of where it goes. So here's where we get into, into that conversation. So um, in the TV series, um, Karara reveals the the location of the Buff Clan, and it basically says, "Hey, here's the thing. My father rules the Buff Clan. Let me talk to him. Take me there. We're obviously going to have to fight people. Whatever. I understand that, but let me appeal to my father directly." And, like, in the final episode of the TV series, she goes, she appeals to her father directly, and he basically says, we've committed. Yeah. No, we've committed. <laughs> Too bad. At which point, and I'm going to, again, spoiler for the finale yeah. of it on TV, we cut, smash cut to a shot of space where a narrator says, and the Ide Force was so disappointed with them that he wiped out both the human race and the Buff Clan. Credits. <laughs> That's literally the ending. <laughs> you don't have oh, to see any of it. You don't get any. Oh just my stops. god! If I was watching that in 1981, <laughs> pre Evangelion, yep. I would just I I would uh, throw the TV. <laughs> I would be <laughs> raging, screaming, raging. Yep. Oh my god! And it's one of the reasons they made the movies. Is it like okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Here's the real ending. Here, here's the ending we wanted to make. Okay, people, put the pitchforks and the torches <laughs> down. We can do this. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Guys... We'll do the thing. We'll keep writing the misery. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> because they, they had the same problem they had with Gundam, is that they, they it was not particularly popular, um, and so they were cut short, but they couldn't like write themselves out of it. They couldn't condense right. it down, so they just stopped it. Um, and then, um, yeah, we later came back to do the, you know, this, and then... Be invoked, um, a little bit like that to bring forth an independent galleon, just a little bit, just a little <sighs> tiny bit, just slightly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which I, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fathom, mm-hmm. having watched both of these movies and just feeling like I just because I, I, I watched them back to back, unfortunately, yeah. and uh, I, I, I did I, too, Steve. I did. And, oh my, I, I feel you. <laughs> I, I was like, was I, I, like afterwards, I was like, was I just punching myself in the face and not realizing it? Because mm. I was like, it was just going through this like, you know, three hours worth of this and almost three hours worth of this, and just like going, oh my god, at the end of it. And then realizing that this was a television series of 50-something <laughs> episodes with a dedicated fan base that was going week after week. Mm-hmm. Give me the misery. Mm-hmm. I want to be depressed. Because that's what it is. Yep. And it's just yep. like, how did you watch this from week to week that you spent, it, you, you, you carved out a half hour of your time to watch mm-hmm. this? <clears throat> for well, 50- I, I mean, I got to imagine for its time frame, mm-hmm. 
there yeah. probably was not a lot like Idiom. Exactly. You know right, what I mean? Right. That you've got, yes, you've still got the battle of the week, the buff clan shows up with, like I said, like shows up with the thing and you do the thing. But you have these consistent <clears throat> characters that are experiencing this. And it's a yeah. never ending kind of like, they don't get, oh, well, you know, now space is clear and we're good mm. for six months. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's sort of the Yamato kind of thing where it's like, oh, we go into like, you know, warp drive space and, you know, we pop out. There's it's, fight. it's very Yamato. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and it's always the fight. Are we <clears> going <throat> to make it? Are we going to, are we going to physically make it? Are we mentally yeah. going to make it? You know, is, you know, mm. is any one of these pilots of the idiot going to crack? Right. And then it's not going to work. And then we're all in danger. And, and it's and are any of them going to die? Because we do see characters, you know, die over the course of the series. So it's like no one's right. necessarily safe. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of the Buff Clan weapons that bounce off. <laughs> at the, the risk, ship, of, and, and at the the risk Indian, of spoilers, but... <laughs> at the risk of spoilers, yeah, literally, Just wait. nobody is safe. <laughs> yeah. Yep, nobody. Uh -huh. yeah. Even the characters that you don't know, oh. not safe. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah. Uh. But yeah, it's it, and what's what's interesting about it too, like, exactly to your point, is that um, it's depressing, but it is well set up depressing, right? Yeah. Where it's not just sad for sadness sake. It's like no, they're in this terrible situation, and they can't just call up the Buff Clan and say, "Please go away now," yeah. right? Uh, Buff it's, Clan it's can't like, just it's like <laughs> you can stop hanging me in the face now. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Buff Clan can't just stop because they've got this essentially princess on board the ship, which they're trying to recover. Or it's this massively powerful weapon that they don't want to just leave and hope nothing bad happens. Like, they want to keep an eye on Ideon, <laughs> right? Um, they turn this thing over to a bunch of kids, <laughs> right? It's all going to be fine. Exactly. No, adults need to handle this. <laughs> um, and so they're just kind of at loggerheads for, again, like 39 episodes, I think it is. Um, because they, they kind of have to be, based on, on the whole premise. Um, and, um, and I also do appreciate it, again, kind of, you know, you have this idea of, you have this whole civilization that is kind of throwing its weapons at the Ideon, um, which, again, kind of helps to set up the whole structure of it, where it's not just, you know, boy, Zeon's good at coming up with experimental prototype mobile suits <laughs> every week. Yeah. <laughs> um... But uh, um, yeah, they, they kind of kind of set up a lot of this, this, this stuff well. But yeah, it, it is it is emotionally very draining. Yeah, you, and, you and know, for it, the for what they had for the, the <clears throat> series to set up the the continuity of tension, mm -hmm. right? Even with the chunkiness and the the sort of jumping around the things, they did at least maintain that. True, that very you true. had yeah. a very consistent from start to finish. Very tense. There's no release yeah. on this. Like I said, there's not like six months that they they stop yeah. at some wayward planet and they're Each fine. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. even when they show up to like try and re, you know restore some of parts of the ship mm -hmm. and get some more supplies and do stuff. There's constant tension. So it's like mm -hmm. they did do that. Yeah. Good. You know, you guys mm -hmm. got that clearly marked there. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just make it less chunky. <laughs> I you know the the whole one of the, the things the premises the premises that, that I had with this with the six civilization creating mm -hmm. Ideon. and I'm like okay well clearly this is a, a civilization that's that's no longer mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. and this is the thing they left behind yeah and I'm like thinking to myself going as because this might have been the last thing one of the last things they built yeah. right. It is almost certainly the final thing they built. They built yeah, right? <laughs> and as there was building, nobody left to build more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so you know they're they're building it, and I can just see the last of them putting the last part on it mm -hmm. and going. Well, our race is doomed. We're about to die probably in the next month or so. But at least we get to live, leave this thing around, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully from heaven we'll be able to have a good chuckle and see what happens next because. <laughs> Why the hell not? Why don't we just leave this thing out there? Well, the doomsday machine's done. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Let's just head on well, off to death. <laughs> and that's one of the interesting things they, they, they bring up in, in the movie, is that it's possible the civilization developed the Ideon out of this idea of, oh, we'll have the, kind of this, this, this incredibly powerful machine, and it kind of sucks up all of their souls and kind of ends their civilization unintentionally. Like, you know, maybe they didn't intend this to do what it did, right. but it kind of took yeah. over and 
all of the, you know, everyone got kind of um, latched into uh, into the system and kind of, oh well, whoops, <laughs> didn't even got to happen. I told you we should have built a robot, not fire trucks. Right. Fire trucks will <laughs> kill you every time. Yeah, that's the what? thing. Yeah. What? <laughs> hey Bob, Boy. don't press the red button. Don't press the red. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you doomed us all, Bob. <laughs> um, and man, if if this isn't if the idiot isn't one of the most obviously like toy to mecha designs oh yeah <laughs> of all time where it's like wow it is literally just three fire truck toys you're about to disassemble but apparently that was yeah. the thing. Like, this was i think the first transformable mecha toy that you could actually do the transformation with mm. if i recall correctly they, 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 they built it and designed it so they actually you know Came apart. And yeah, actually yeah. came yeah. apart and assembled into Idion, which you know, if you've ever seen Get a Robo and its transformation sequence, yeah. they all just kind of, you know, morph into each other, just kind of blow yeah. of claymation into each other. It's like not the the intention. So like, um, like how Flender can go from dark yeah, mode exactly, to airplane. Exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, this one had Bandai scratching their head, like, how do we do the, yeah, the truck do this way and then clack that in there and yeah. just open um, that up? So very cool, but also, you know, very much a toy. Oh, yeah. But also funny because, like, you can see how much thought they put into, like, the transformation sequence. Because um, all the different things are going to move, and you see how that, okay, the head comes out of there, and that, okay, that hides that in there. Like, they really thought it through very carefully. Well, you know what was interesting, actually, talking about the, the actual mecha design of the idiom for the anime? It's very simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's not like the Gundam where it's just like, okay, we have the ventilators here, we got the yeah. thing pops out here. Da, 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 da. Idion is pretty simple. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, if I remember correctly, in the in the first movie, like he doesn't bring out a gun. He doesn't have a gun. He doesn't have mm -hmm. a sword mm -hmm. or anything. He just starts punching yeah. things <laughs> and destroying yeah. it, swatting yeah. things out of the air. There, yeah, and a and, lot of missiles. Yes, yeah. missiles, <laughs> missiles. Yes. <laughs> Good Which, Lord, thank never. goodness during those resupply missions they had six million year old missiles to put <laughs> yeah. in there. That's six amazing. Million of the six, of million, six million year old missiles. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those missile stores just laid around forever. Humans yeah. never knew what to do with them. Like, if I've knew? learned anything from like side scroller shooting games, all you have to do is just like, you know, hop in somewhere, there's a store halfway through the, you know, alien destruction war, and you can just buy more missiles. That you can yeah, just yeah. pop into your, your 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 ship and you're good to go, you know. They're just right there conveniently. Right, exactly. Good, you know. Good. Um, good. Okay, uh, we're gonna get, okay, kids. We gotta get to the gas station. We're gonna get some gas. Get make sure you get the diet cokes. Get the chips for the kids. Uh, Thirteen ATS missiles. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know. <laughs> get gas. Now all you have to do is make baby Lou panic, and then yeah, you get all yeah, the gas you need. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and folks, we're still on the first movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is all set up. Yeah, yes, um, it is. <laughs> oh, God, is it a set up? Where it goes. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. The Idiot is a very straightforward design. It, it's interesting, too, because you'd think ancient alien weapon, you'd make it very alien, but it feels very utilitarian. Yes. Yeah. Um, even beside kind of the, the, the angular sort of red truck. Um, feel to it. It, just, it still just feels very, um, you know, not what you'd expect from a military <clears throat> civilization necessarily. Beyond the Optimus Prime thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> no. Wait, well, was it? Well, uh, might have been. Oh, geez. See, this this is the part where having like Steve right, watched yeah. back to back. I can't. I can't tell whether her, uh, Karala's father mm -hmm. says something to his his buddy. Well, we could just deploy those. And then when this is all over, we'll just turn them back into like functional usage. Mm. That was the like second makes, part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was the second part. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, okay. back, 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 back and away. Back and away. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know it's hard because I'm like I'm I'm like trying to remember where Kitten falls in in all this. Oh, she, second, she's second, second one. The second. second yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember if she was at the very end or if she was at the very beginning. Which yeah. which boy having the background of Kitten? You know. Yeah. Talking about smash cut. I, I, will, um, I will say the title screen of the second movie is iconic because of Kitten. Because you remember what you see over the title, what is happening when the title Be Invoked shows up. 
Yes. Yeah. I see. I hadn't, I hadn't even noticed the title stuff. I was just watching that like gobsmack. Like, what the yep. hell's going mm, on here? Yep. Imagine yep. walking into that man. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? I gotta see this. Um. Um. Dear Tomino, stop yeah. killing people. <laughs> Thank you. Keep killing people? Okay. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, well, that's the other thing about Ideon, is it, it was, let's just say, memorable. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ideon shows up in Christine Pine show. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show a few images here. Here's Gunbuster, um, a moment from Gunbuster, um, firing a bunch of lasers, which looks a little bit like Ideon. Firing a bunch of lasers. Um, here is um, here are some moments from Daikon Three, um, which shows uh, fireworks going off, forming the Ide symbol in the sky, Ooh, uh, nice. which is very cool. And then the, the Gundam literally transforms into the Ideon partway through, which I think <coughs> is kind of funny. Um, uh, you also have um, here's a moment from Kill a Kill. I don't even remember this moment. Um, where, yeah, you have one of the characters literally forming the Ide symbol. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I did not realize that. <laughs> That's what she's doing right there. Oh, um, damn. And then, of course, I mean, one of the, one of the bigger ones <coughs> is uh, Shirobako. I'll expand this a little bit. When the characters go to a, an, an Ide Pawn event <laughs> in, <laughs> in, I think, Akihabara, <laughs> uh, episode six. Where they're looking at all of the like memorabilia and uh, you know um, stuff from the series, so to speak. There's an important episode because one of the characters is like um, feeling burned out, and he goes back and remembers. You know, Ideon was one, Idipon was one of the shows from his youth, and this was kind of what inspired him to get into animation and anime. So this is like a a full episode of Shirobako, like referencing Space Runaway Ideon. Um, so yes, this was a a a show that you know people remembered. <laughs> it had impact. It had impact, and uh, and and then uh, made its way into another anime. In fact, the references to, to this were so close they had to edit the show. It got this episode got pulled down off Crunchyroll, um, and then oh. got re-uploaded after they had kind of reconfigured some of the references to Ideon a little bit to be a little less blatant, apparently. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, that was a bit of a problem. Um, um, but yes, this is definitely an iconic show in a lot of different ways. Um, probably because there's so many children who were so depressed after watching it. Yeah. In the 90s. Um, hey, Johnny, why are you feeling sad? I got you that toy that you liked so much. Because you were so depressed. <laughs> It's the toy where everybody dies. Doesn't that make you happy? You're happy? <laughs> <laughs> so lost, please. So lost. And when we say everybody, um, but we'll do yeah. that later. Uh, so yeah, so that is Space Runaway Ideon a contact. Um, any other comments, thoughts, opinions? Oi. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. So I, I would like, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but I would like to just tell everyone in chat land that the, for part two, be prepared to oh, yeah. sing happy birthday. Sing. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it all will be, all will be revealed. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, as I said in the Discord comment, I'm like deeply unsatisfied with these films. But it's, <clears throat> it, it, I say that from the pure perspective that had I watched all of Idiot on the TV series, mm -hmm. then this would have assisted me in so much more because I would have had so much more background. So that the, yeah. the pieces, parts that drop in, in how they cobbled these films together would have made yeah. much more sense and it would have been like probably a nostalgia down like yeah. oh that's right yeah because they were such and such and this thing happened that's yeah okay that's why we're here yeah. it's like but not having that mm -hmm. i just got to the end of both of them like ah, <laughs> i this i'd have to recommend you sit down watch all of idion and then mm -hmm come back and try and put these films together in, in a way that, that is more satisfying psychologically. Yeah, yeah. But that's so, personal so, opinion. 
like uh, and as i've never seen <clears throat> i don't think i actually have even seen an episode of idiot mm-hmm. um you know watching this movie and just being utterly lost um like you know when when you go through the gundam movies mm-hmm. that talk of, you know they do a better job of you know here okay you never told, saw the tv series here's the important things you need to know mm-hmm. we'll fill in the rest if you if if we have to but you know here's the important things with the movies, it was it was very difficult if you haven't seen it to get through it, and then <clears throat> by the time that you get to the end of it, um, and no, you have to know that the ending of the movies is different than the ending of the, of the television series. And I'm not gonna, you know, we'll talk about it next week, but it's its own special little private hell, mm-hmm. and um, it's just. You know, you get through this, and it's just you know, John, I share your your sentiment that's deeply unsatisfying because not because it's a bad story, not because the characters are unlikable or anything like that. Yeah. It's just that it's just told in such a way that it's just not pleasing. Mm-hmm. And um, well, I'm still wondering. Yeah, I still I didn't have quite the the. I had a similar reaction to that to that did with Evangelion, the original series, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't as much as that. I think the more reaction I had was when they were singing about three quarters of the way through the ending. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. what? At 4 a.m. in the morning Mm -hmm. watching this, by the way, don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. Me sitting at the laptop going, (laughs) did the stroke happen? Did the stroke happen? And this is what I'm hearing? Um, No, but it's, it's, Conceptually, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea of, of Idiot is very interesting. How it's how it's done, how it's powered, and all that stuff. These are very interesting ideas that come out and uh, in the movie. But you just wish that there was something like just one little thread, just one, mm-hmm. just one little thread to connect it all together. Yeah, but you don't really get that. And, it's, and I, 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 I very much concur because. Um, I have not watched. I did not watch every single episode of the original Idiot on TV series because there's po- points where I was like to quote Monty Python, "Skip a bit, brother." Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Battle of the week for like the next five episodes. I can I can yep. move on. Um, but coming back and watching this movie, I, I, I did have that kind of nostalgia rush. Of, oh yeah, Bess. Oh yeah, you know, not Masato. Oh yeah, not. Um, 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 oh, I mean, can can we talk a little bit? Um, um, can we get a good shot of, um, yeah, get it in here somewhere? No, they're, they're, they just don't like her at all in this, apparently. Um, uh, the blonde-haired girl. Oh, yeah, wow, she was, uh, uh, Kasha? Kasha, yeah. Kasha, yes. Um, um, uh, boy, I am forgetting all of my things. Hold on. Um, the fact that she had the pink ranger outfit. <laughs> um, I can't believe I can't. Boy, I need sleep. Apparently, um, sleep is overrated. Yeah. Sleep is for the weak. <laughs> um, uh, there we go. Totally not Oscar. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, yeah, a little bit of a model there <laughs> for Oscar. But yeah, it's 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 hard because like this is one of those anime where. <laughs> Like, even I found the TV series unsatisfying. Um, partly because of the ending. Like, that's not a very good end TV series. Um, yeah. But also because it is just this dep- the unrelenting, depressing ride all the way through with no real payoff for that. Um, you know, it doesn't feel like there's a point to that. Requiem for a Dream is a good example. Um, where, you know, Requiem for a Dream clearly you know, is yeah. telling a story with all of the horrible things going on. And it's kind of, you know, saying something with that. This doesn't seem to be saying anything with that. It just seems to be, well, life sucks. Too bad. Um, and then you get the movie ending, of which it's supposed to make you feel better, but you just go, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Okay. No. Um, <clears throat> I didn't need to see Deck in that way. Thank so, you. So, yeah. stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, there was, it, oh boy, second film, I, there was a moment I paused that I didn't believe I saw. <laughs> and I was just, and then, like, I'm like, I'm like, I, no, I rewound it like three times. I'm like, no, I didn't see that. Mm. No, I didn't see, I did see that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. During, during the bridge battle. No, yeah. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> was it a, a, a certain part of uh, of an anime getting blown off? Uh huh. Oh. Yep. <laughs> uh huh. I'm a horrible yeah. human being. That's and a moment. Made me laugh. That, 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 <laughs> that is a moment that I don't think anyone forgets in the second. No. Moment. I. Yeah, I um, just was like, uh, no, yeah. that, that's, there's um, a cloud, there's a cloud or something. Yeah. That there's, you know, like <laughs> things are going on, and maybe yeah. somebody, might, maybe somebody moved a different way. That I'm no, no I rewound it three times to be absolutely sure. I'm like, so, oh, um, my I laughed goodness. the yeah. first time. I laughed the first time. <laughs> I watched it again a couple more times just to make sure that that was what I saw. Yeah. And then because I kept thinking, oh, you know what? You know how in Gundam you can see like the dirt on the cell animation? Right, yeah, maybe yeah. they just didn't, for, maybe they just, you know, for time or whatever, they no. just didn't draw it in. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. It was, it no, was close yeah. to me. Well, yeah. I mean, all you need is the, the character's reaction to that, too. Yeah. I mean, it's like, oh, no, that just didn't right. happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and that was where Kill Mall Tomato got his name. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that is name. And, again. We'll, we'll get to it next week, but like that is also legitimately where Tomino is like, no, I'm serious. Like that is a turning point in that movie of him saying, no, no, you know, where you think this is going? Yes, we're going there. Um, yes. So I'll give him credit for that. Yeah, that, it, that it's it's a it's a um, um, it feels. Maybe earned isn't the right word, but it feels like, yep, this is what this sort of story should have. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'll, give, I'll give mad props to anybody who's willing to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, when Roy Foker dies mm-hmm. in Macross, yeah. right. and he's there in, in Claudia, you know, the, the obviously the English version, Claudia and yeah, yeah. Roy, um, oh, so yeah. and he dies in her cabin. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, I wept. Mm-hmm. When Ben Dixon dies, when the the shield unit overreacts mm-hmm. right. and kills him, and Max and Rick are the only ones to get away, mm-hmm. I cried because being willing to go that far to that point, mm-hmm. great. You know, we we talked about GI Joe before. We're like sometimes the things explode and you don't see anybody parachute out. So mm-hmm. what happens? Yeah. A lot of the time, boom, parachute. <laughs> hey, tank goes up, hatches open, people run out. Oh, everything's okay. So I mad respect if you can kill off people yeah. to drive the story, to drive the point, to get that reaction, get you you know really invested in this. Mm-hmm. And it's like Tomino, just like it's like crack. He just killed everybody. <laughs> it's like it, it hits that certain point where you're like. I am so respectful of you, sir, and your <clears throat> idea that like nothing, is, nothing is sacred. Mm-hmm. You yeah, can just yeah, go exactly. forward to do this thing. It's mm-hmm. like what? What? Hold on, just one or two? No, just, hold on, not ten. No, <laughs> stop killing people. I need somebody to. Oh, yeah, just oh, fine. I, I just mm-hmm. feel like Thanks. I just feel like every week when he walked into that storyboard session, <laughs> and he goes and he goes to to, to the to the drawers and the writers, and he goes, um. So which character do you like? <laughs> I, All right, cool. All right. I this, him walking... this is how that character dies. And the whole story worker goes, oh, okay. <laughs> I imagine him walking up and they have like portraits of each of the characters up on the wall. <laughs> and he comes up with like a big stamp. Okay, this week, bam! <laughs> <laughs> or like black electrical tape. Yeah. You just see him standing there and you hear that. <laughs> pulls it off and puts it on a corner of it. Oh no, sir! Really? Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's, Wars uh, real, kids. People die. Yeah. That's yes. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. And again, this is one of the things that I again I kind of respect him for this is that the scenario definitely supports that. Where yeah. this is a situation where nobody's <clears throat> in a strategically good or bad position. Right, like m- missiles can come in, things can happen. They can take out anyone at any time because, you know, that is just the the, the place there. I know we're we're supposed to talk about it for about it next week, but I will say that one particular scene mm. where the thing happens, mm-hmm. really everything's gone pell mell. Yeah, in that in that in that sequence in that sixty second sequence, it's mm-hmm. just like everything. You're just like you're feeling. It. You're just like yeah. ah ah mm-hmm. ah yeah. ah mm-hmm. ah. So yeah, stuff's little... exploding. Things are flying yeah. around. Mm-hmm. It's like yep. mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Shrapnel yeah. is a thing. Mm-hmm. We learn shrapnel is a thing. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. that's 
four. And it's something you, you got in Original Gundam, where, um, was it, oh, I forget, one of the, um, like, engineer crew that you, you, you know, you had seen over time, when Rumble Rawl attacks Whitebase, you know, you see him in, you know, um, in a hallway, and he gets gunned down, you know, and they go by, and, like, nobody says, you know, oh, no, no, they're just, that one's, that, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. What do you do? Um, I can just imagine that you're brought by and they go, oh, in the face. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Well, don't we have that <laughs> that going? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and not just oh, once, folks. B- oh, no. no, <laughs> no yeah. No. Yeah. 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 So, in the face. Look forward to that. Uh, yeah. Next week, when we talk about uh, Ideon being evoked <laughs> um, and the <sighs> end of Evangelion esque ending that we get out of that one. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, Things we as do far through. as the, as far as this show goes, that's as happy an ending as you're really gonna get. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's worth the, it's one of the reasons I like doing and talking about shows like this because I think if you yeah, again imagine being 12 years old and turning on this show in 1980, <laughs> right? You know, ooh, giant robots. Um, I think if you come into Idion realizing, okay, here's what I'm gonna get. Right. It's a lot more palatable. It's still hard. <laughs> yeah. At least like, okay, I, I understand. I like that guy. He's kind of... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, he's not so good. The other one, he's... the Oh, that was a grenade. Oh. I can only put up and take down the posters of my heroes. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they made posters of any of those characters. <laughs> Such a shifting palette of characters. Exactly, yes. You know? <laughs> Uh, I, I would love to have seen the meetings between like Tomino and the financiers, <laughs> and all the suits and so forth. How are you gonna do this show? Well, let me explain. Wait, you, you know what? You, uh, well, Wait, you gonna, you, no, how? no. And you want to make us? You want us to make a toy out of that? <laughs> you know, for kids. You press the button and the, and, and the arm just... But no! <laughs> I'm thinking of a series of action figures of the main characters, and when you push a button in their back, their heads explode. <laughs> well, you know how the... No. Uh, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know how you have toys with like, the, the, the faces that would like flip? Yes. yes. Right? You have one normal one, and one with like the, the bullet <laughs> hole. <laughs> <laughs> and like the with little the streams of blood. Yes, yeah. the blood. Yeah. Yes. Just, oh... <laughs> What was the, uh, the really? heat, man? Many faces. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the little dial yeah. on the top and flip the face around. Do that. So, yes. Character alive, character dead. Character alive, character dead. Oh. That's a free one for all of you, you know, figurine makers out there. Um, go ahead and make that and, and have fun with it. Oh, wow. Um, Gross yeah. over, over a million bucks. Just make the 10% uh, mm. payment out to uh, Brent. <laughs> if only. All right, um, that'll do it for Be In Vote. Again, we'll be back next week to talk. I'm sorry, that, that's it for A Contact. We'll be back a next contact, week yep. for, for Be In Vote. A, B. See, ha, ha, ha. Clever. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, clever in death. And oh, right nice. now, we're going to take a quick break, <laughs> just a few minutes. We'll be back to talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. We will be right back. 